Hello everyone, welcome to Talk Here with Dr. Lazo Fury Tales program on television, reaching you from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. My name is Dr. Laz Eze. Yes, uh, in 2020, precisely 15th June 2020, during the COVID-19 lockdown, uh, I led a number of Nigerians, about more than 300 of them as at then, uh, and we formally inaugurated the Make Our Hospital Work campaign. And it was informed by the need for more citizen participation, more community ownership, as it has to do with primary health care and, of course, secondary and tertiary health care to make sure that everyone plays their part, ensuring that our health care facilities provide the highest possible quality of medical care to Nigerian people or all residents of Nigeria. Of course, over the past two years plus, uh, there's been a number of activities, a number of efforts being made by citizens, some of which we have talked about on this program. We talked about the development in Olama Boro local government in Kogi State, where a number of young people have been leading the Ogugu uh, Make House to Work campaign. We also talked about uh, the Okwasi uh, in a Boeing state make us to work campaign, you know. So, but uh, last year, uh, 2021 precisely, um, we Talk Health Niger and the Make us to Work campaign got some support from the Open Society Initiative in West Africa. And we started using the media because, of course, Talk Health Niger seeks to use media like I'm just doing now uh, on TV and also radio. Uh, blog talkheadniger.com to influence activities, you know, give people knowledge. And we believe that when people are knowledgeable about what they need to do, they will take actions in communities. So we tested that in Ebo State through the strengthening accountability in primary health care amid COVID-19, SPARC, the SPARC project. And we had very, uh, you know, uh, interesting results, results that makes, made us happy that we started a campaign in the first place. So building on that, I wrote a book which I called How to Make a Hospital Work. I have a, a copy here. And that book was formally presented to the public on 8 December 2022 with a number of healthcare experts, medical experts, health advocates, community representatives, uh, NGO, civil society, you know, present, and they shared their views, some of the participants. We asked them a simple question. We asked them what they are doing to help to make our hospital work or what they intend to do or what they want people to do, you know, to help make our hospital work. And of course, uh, there are a lot of variety of responses, which is what I'll be bringing to you on the program today. So you are going to hear more about that after this break. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Talk Here with us, Lazio Favorite Tales program on television. Yes, we're talking about uh, what we need to do as citizens to make our hospital work and also getting to know what people are doing already to help make us to work. Uh, the role of communities in primary health care particularly cannot be overemphasized. So at the book presentation, uh, I had the uh, founder and CEO of the Nisa Medical Group, Dr. Ibrahim Wada. Of course, a lot of persons in Nigeria know him. He won uh, just a few days ago an award as the Physician of the Year in the private sector category. Uh, at an award presented to Lagos. Congratulations, Dr. Wada. Uh, Dr. Wada is the founder of the Nisa Premier Hospital, you know, here in Abuja, one of the biggest private uh, hospitals in the country. And he shared some thoughts, you know, on, uh, from his uh, perspective. Let's get to uh, hear what he said. What needs to be done to make our primary health centers work is a partnership. We've demonstrated this at the Garki example. There's primary, secondary there. Honestly, there is nowhere on earth that government alone does anything health. Health belongs to the almighty God, not to government and not to private. Any mixture that makes our people healthier and live longer must be tolerated. That's the point. 
we cannot say, oh, government didn't do, government did, no. Pull all resources together. And we must be able to have excellent primary health care centers near where we live. The advantage will be that people don't have to have money to access those primary health care centers. They can go on any kind of low health insurance. Now that we have National Health Insurance Authority, every average citizen must be able to go to a primary health care center without saying, do I have money? Yes, uh, apart from Dr. Wada, we also had uh, the former head of the uh, medical program or what's, uh, first medical uh, team of the Nigerian police, uh, a retired assistant inspector general of police, Dr. Grace Chita Okudo, who was also, who chaired the, that book presentation. Uh, we had the chairman of National Advocates for Health, uh, Honorable Muhammad Usman, of course the grand patron uh, of National Advocates for Health, who is also the founder of Association for Reproductive and Family Health, Professor Oladakpo, Ladikpo. You know, he's, he's a mentor and a, a great uh, physician, uh, obstetrician and gynecologist that has done a lot in this country. So I know you want to also hear their perspective as it has to do with what we have to do to make our to work or what they're already doing. Discovered is that when you get this together and they buy into the into the project, a lot of things happen. So you see them even volunteering to do many things, and also it's one good way of sensitizing the people about preventable diseases and how to detect de detect uh, some disease condition that if if handled early. Can be resolved, and that is what you call primary health care. So, this is the way to go. Those who have made it, countries that have made it, they start they establish good primary health care. Millions of Nigerians live in rural communities, and most of these rural communities do not have functional health care uh, centers. So, the whole essence of make our hospital work project is to ensure that hospitals at the rural level, rural communities where you have millions of Nigerians are functional. You discover currently, as I'm talking, that you find a lot of communities without one functional hospital. What happens? It means a lot of our mothers when uh, giving child baths will not be able to go to the hospital. Even when they are in the hospital, they will not be able to get uh, the required uh, uh, facilities for safe delivery. And consequently, such women usually lose their lives. Likewise, we have a lot of children also who are dying, in particular under five uh, kids. So if we are able to make our hospital work at the community level, I am assuring you the level, this high mortality rate that the country is really recording will be reduced to the BRS uh, minimum. So part of what I was able, for instance, to do as a former legislator was to ensure that I constructed lots of uh, 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 primary health care centers and to provide them with the uh, required, you see, facilities, equipment, based on what have you, for them to be uh, functional. In fact, that was what I did through the uh, constancy projects that I enjoyed as a former member. And that is why currently I still appeal to my colleagues in the National Assembly to prioritize health, to ensure that uh, they build and provide hospitals with a lot of facilities and to also call on influential members of our societies, of our communities to donate, to put in little money in our hospital. Every member of the community, every elite should ensure that he adopts one or two primary health care centers within his community. And once we do that, I believe we are going to really improve on our health care system in Nigeria. To ensure that we improve uh, the health care of our people. One, 
we need to improve health literacy. I think that was ably demonstrated uh, in that uh, film that we saw. People must be aware that health is wealth. An investment in the health sector should be a priority. Both health and education are the twin engines for development and growth and security. But many people in the assembly do not understand that. A healthy nation will be a wealthy nation. A healthy population will be a creative and innovative nation. And therefore, we must emphasize health is wealth. In addition to that, the community must take ownership. Great insights there. Uh, of course, it's not just the professionals or the advocates uh, that share their view. We had some active political actors. One of them is a health expert uh, who's, uh, my, who was my first guest on this program, but he's now a deputy governorship candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance in a Boeing State, Dr. Nkatachuku. And we also had a couple of other uh, candidates who were at the program from different political parties. Let's hear their perspectives. Besides what I do as a health policy and system specialist, I also run a couple of charities. Um, over the last maybe five, six years, we've invested in, through my foundation in education and in health. Um, you know, making contributions into providing basic, uh, basic equipment, um, sensitizing people about health. But on the bigger scale as a health policy specialist, I've uh, worked over the last decade and a half in looking at the right policy, like I talked about financing. Yes. Um, I've done extensive work looking at the best arrangements that would allow us to finance healthcare without further impoverishing our people. Um, looking at the work around the minimum package of care at the primary care level. I'm one of those who worked on revising those policies oh, that are in place and the guidelines now. Okay. So both in my professional and personal, personal. yeah, I've tried, um, well, I'm trying, there's no best. Yeah, exactly. I'm still trying, yeah, to contribute to growing the, um, the health sector. sector. So when you don't have the right level of investment and you don't have the right, you're not buying the right amount of input, the human resource, the infrastructure, the technology, the drugs and consumables, you definitely will have poor health outcomes. So I've had a lot of engagement, you know, advocating for better healthcare system in the country. And as a legislative expert, I have been part of those pushing, you know, for the National Health Act 2014 to be effectively implemented. Primary health care is at the foundation of our health system. And if it's not functional and efficient, we cannot achieve anything in the health sector. So despite building structures, and all of that, people must take ownership of uh, the, the, the concepts and even those structures and the systems in place. And what he's doing is not just bringing um, sensitization, enlightenment, he's also making um, citizens, communities, realize that it's only them that can properly take care of their health by synergizing with government, with institutions. And so I am part of that process and um, uh, I, 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 not just I love it, I support it. We'll take a break now and when we return, uh, you're going to be watching other views shared by participants at the event. And just before we close, I will have uh, the team lead of Up Policy Make House to Work campaign. Join me in the studio here for just like a uh, few minutes to also share his own perspective. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Talk Here with us, last your favorite health program on television. We've been watching the perspectives of experts, political actors, as well as uh, advocates on how we can help make our through work in Nigeria. So there are other perspectives shared on the sideline of the book presentation on how to make our hospital work. And I'm sure you want to hear more voices. Do watch. Um, I think it's um, to continue with the campaign, you know, talk about uh, on especially brain drain of medical doctors, uh, you know, to talk about the importance of um, 
making, I mean, developing a hospital, equipping them, and then making it work so that our doctors and our medical um, practitioners will not jackba, as they say, jackba, you know, yes. <laughs> as the skin said, so they can just stay back and then put their hands together to really make our hospital work. I think in Kogi State, uh, it has been a collective effort of individuals and well-meaning uh, citizens of uh, the various communities we are working and uh, the, the, the result of the effort uh, is clear enough even for the blind to see. Uh, let me just give you a highlight of what we've been doing and what we've been able to achieve uh, over this years. I think um, uh, in Ogugu, uh, that is in Olamabra local government in this state, the team has been able to revamp the uh, hospital, the primary health care, the, sorry, the Government Cottage Hospital in Ogugu. We are making the hospital work by trying to make advocacy to people to come at early stage for cancer prevention when cancer can be treated. Because early detection, early treatment improves outcome. So the hospitals are not working for cancer patients currently because people are presenting very late. So we are advocating for people to come early so that when they come early, it's at a stage where the hospital can work for them. And uh, also, we are hoping that we can also uh, advocate for those that present early enough for capacity building for the healthcare provider for the hospitals to be able to take care of them. You know, when you talk about hospitals working, it requires a holistic approach to both um, the technical know-how, the doctors in the hospital, and we, the activists at the background, trying to put in resources and make sure that the government do what they ought to do. And it's it's not only for the government to do, we also have to contribute our own uh, quota to the success of this program. So we have, um, we have committees in different locations that are meeting, consulting the government, the local government, and the people, and the hospital, the health workers. In my own constituency, we have a committee, but I am not actually part of them for now, you understand? But uh, you can go to our primary health care center and you see that the works are going on because before now it used to be a dilapidated building and I know it's not just the government funding alone. It has to require a lot of people bringing it to the notice of the government that this is what is wrong and this is what needs to be done. What we have is hospital buildings that lacks hospital systems. So the government are not doing enough. In fact, the budget for health is poor. The previous budget has been mismanaged. So the government, I don't think, have done enough. My advice to the government is that a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So if they take the, the um, issue of health seriously, then Nigeria will come back to life again. Then our doctors will no longer be living for better working conditions. As a programs manager, for example, of uh, community development, we have an initiative called Follow the Money. And we follow the money. We are currently tracking projects across education, health, wash sector. And the health sector actually plays a critical role in one of the pivotal projects which we track as Follow the Money. So we've been following up, tracking uh, interventional projects in the healthcare sector across Nigeria and looking, of course, that also happens to put across healthcare centers, be it primary, tertiary, and even the secondary health institutions we have in Nigeria. So, from my own end, we're ensuring monuments to go into making our health center, our healthcare work, is actually accounted for and judicially put to this. And that is one on one part. Also, we also carry, we carry out what we call the state of health care research that we produce annually. The first episode, uh, edition of that uh, research came out uh, last year, 2021. We'll also be having a second episode of that, uh, or edition of that, coming in uh, by the end of this year. So making it to an edition that talks about the state of primary health care centers across Nigeria. A holistic report uh, that also have far-reaching recommendations from uh, from experts that could help improve the system. And we're not just doing this, we're collaborating 
very well with uh, the National Panama Health Care Development Agency to carry out this research and of course with other uh, partners to be able to make this come uh, to bear. So for us and for me, and we're actually doing a whole lot to ensure we make our healthcare work for us. Yes, uh, they can't say it better than they did. Uh, coming back to the studio now, I have uh, to round up this uh, program today. The team lead of Okwasi Make Our Hospital Work campaign in the Boyn State South East Nigeria, uh, Mr. Rafael Okereke, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Dr. Lars, for having me. Yes, he's uh, a dentist as well and uh, a, a key volunteer in the Make Our Hospital Work campaign. So I just have one question for you. From your experience uh, with your, what you and your team are doing, you know, how does active community participation lead to improvement in functionality of either the primary health care or the hospital, as the case may be? Well, thank you very much, Dr. Lars. I think this is a very good question and I open up to me it has very serious impact. I think it should be the number one because now when the members of the community come to intervene, you see the, the, the health workers try to respond and be more active. I can cite an example when one of the kings visited, everybody was running health as scatter and they, at the time they would tell me, please don't divide them again. They will keep doing the influence. Which, which, which king visited? Um, His Royal Highness. Oh, you a, mean a traditional ruler yes, in a, your community? Yes, a traditional ruler. Okay. So the, his influence there, you know, makes them to be up and doing active. And I, it also, the stakeholders and some of the uh, people in the community come together to intervene by bringing money to construct uh, some other facilities or uh, infrastructure that could help the hospital, like the ramps, the build ramps, electrify the place, solar system. We also did a, a borehole where there were many other things that they did. In which from hospital? The General Hospital of Boston, that's what they did. The community really tried in doing that. And then they used some of their people in government, you know, to attract many other things from the government. That is what the people can do. And then from the, we, we other, had other volunteers who also helped to disseminate information, help, you know, help people to know what they can do to make the hospital work. And then people started influencing that. So it really had a strong impact in the community level. Are, are there health committees you know, within your locality at the village level? Yeah, and there. if they are, what, impact, what results has it have so seen? We, we had many, we were able to institute many health committees, like East Simple Health Committee, Amenu Health Committee, and many others. Uh, about 10 to 11 of them. Now, many of them now have, have built their health posts currently to get the health sector closer to their people. Because of, for the people who are, who are far from the basic health facility, now they get it closer to themselves. Now, people have built health posts, health centers, as a result of this information. Okay, so... Um is there increased government intervention as a result of the activities of those health committees? Yeah, seriously, it has an impact. When people speak, especially the kind of voices that the government can listen to. I know at, as at 2020, 2020, December 2020, we attracted hospital equipment worth of uh, millions of money from a Bonin State government, which is right now in General Hospital of Boston. Thank you for uh, finding time to join me on the program. Thank you very much, Dr. Lars. Thanks for watching up to this point. Uh, the entire conversation is about how citizens and communities can do more to make our hospital work. We can't get tired of talking about this because usually when it comes to healthcare, we just say government, government, government. Government clearly has its responsibilities and the primary responsibility to make sure that our hospitals are working, whether it's private through uh, supervision and oversight or public through increased investment. But of course, we have roles to play as individuals and citizens. And if you don't understand how to go about it, yes, you now have something that could guide you, uh, the book on how to make our hospital work. So uh, feel free to reach us through any of our communication channels uh, if you need a copy of the book. And last point I need to make is this end of the year, you know, Christmas season and Merry Christmas in advance. And this is also the part of the year that different groups 
communities may also have meetings during the holiday. And being that next year is election, there's expected to be a lot of political activities within communities. Please, as you're making demands to politicians, those who are running for one election or the other, topmost of your list should be the health needs of your community. Things they need to do to make sure that your primary health center or district hospital or cottage hospital or general hospital, whatever you call it, is much more functional. Get, go to them, meet the health workers, ask them about their needs, ask them about their problems so that you as communities will be able to present it to those who are aspiring to lead from next year. This is the best time. And also when communities are raising money to solve some community problems, they should also remember that healthcare is very critical. My name is Dr. Lars Eze. See you same station, same time next week. Bye for now.